Did your parents give you that middle name? Yeah. That's a cool middle name. Uh, yeah, so as probably most of you know, my project was uh, creating a Pokédex. And if everyone doesn't know what that is, it's a collection of, it's the way that in the world of Pokémon, they categorize Pokémon. It's a little device. Uh, but yeah, so I did my, for my project. Uh, this is just like every time you reload, it drops you down on this page. Uh, it, this is just a brief introduction. If you don't know what a Pokemon is, I have a video link there. I'm not going to play it just because I feel like most people have an understanding of what Pokemon is at the moment. So, um, And then it drives, it, I have navigate, a short navigation menu here. This lets you drop in where you want to go. So if you click National, that drops you right in on Pokemon number one, Bulbasaur. And then you can see I have top bar navigation, a uh, first, previous, next, last navigation to let you go through all 840 Pokemon that are on there. Uh, a picture, and then a brief description of the Pokemon just based on fields. Um, then using fields, I created four data tables here that I felt were the most important information I could gather. Type, abilities, base stats, and egg groups. And then down the bottom, I have an evolution tracker. So some Pokemon are able to evolve. So you can see that this Pokemon evolves into Ivysaur. So if you navigate to Ivysaur, you can then see that Ivysaur evolves from Bulbasaur, but evolves into Venusaur. And then Venusaur does not evolve any, to anything else. So it only has evolves from Ivysaur. Uh, over here on the sidebar, I created a custom sidebar that lets you drop down and pick any random Pokemon from the random generations. I felt that generations was the best way to organize things. Wait, they're not random. No. Okay. Any Pokemon yeah. from I'm a generation. Saying, Got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ben's was random. <laughs> yeah. 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 So then you can see a little bit more of the first, previous, next, last, now that you're not on Pokemon number one. Um, in addition to... Uh, categorizing all these Pokemon. I, I, I imported a spreadsheet. I didn't say that earlier, but I also created uh, my own navigation menus. So uh, you can sort by a single type or a dual type. So basically you can say, show me all the normal Pokemon organized by national decks or any of the other base stats. So attack. So you can see that Hathini has the uh, least of attack and you scroll down to the bottom that Reggie Gigas has the highest attack. Uh, similarly, the egg group menu. What was the dual typing? It is, the dual typing is the same as this, except it lets you search by the first type of the Pokemon and then the second type. Oh, did you get one working that searched for any Pokemon that had it in type one or type two? Yeah, yeah. I can show that off uh, <coughs> afterwards. Okay, so. But, yeah, some, yeah, I can't remember who, so I think Mike gave me this code. Mickey gave me this code. Don't even give credit see, to me. Uh, gave it to me. I completely forgot it was you. I'm trying <laughs> to remember who gave it to me. Yep. Um, egg groups, functions, just exactly the same. You know, Do you think that we should actually track credit and where, you, where people got code from? Or does it, is that just like fun stuff to track? Do you think I should require students to do that? Like where did you get your code from? I don't think so. Uh, I think it's fine. I mean, it's, it's a collaborative class. Yeah. No, I was just curious. Because, no, the only reason for doing that is that sometimes I find pieces of code that I know I didn't write and I have no idea where I got it from and it's not working. <laughs> so I'd like to go back because maybe the person updated it, but it's anyway. Yeah. So I do that um, for myself, not for it. Yeah. yeah. The, the last piece I have is my abilities menu, which is uh, different than the other ones. It's a drop down. So, you, you know, here's the ability pressure. You drop that down, you can see a list of all the Pokemon that have that ability. And oh, nice. And all the other ones. Yeah. This is using the appear tag yep. of the reveal. Yeah, I think a lot of people use appear. Yeah. I, I find appear is really easy to implement. Mm -hmm. yep. And then on the side, I implemented the, uh, I changed this around this round too, so you can switch between zoom in, top, I don't know what top is. Top comes from it's weird. top. Top was that was driving Jillian crazy, right? 
it was using the wrong zoom view and we could not figure it out for, for anything. And it was because you were on top zoom view. Yeah. I don't know where top comes from. It's not a standard mm -hmm. zoom view. I think it's being, I think it comes from the guy, Matt, who wrote the tiddly spot creator. I think he had, and remember, I had him take something weird out in the beginning and I just never noticed that he created his own view. Yeah. And that drove us crazy for, that took a long time to figure that one out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then I removed, I obviously, I, since I did show us in the Zoom showcase, I removed all of the navigation, excluding the closed tiddler button. Well, why would you do that? So I removed it just for a pure fact that it makes my title move over more, so mm -hmm. it's more centered. But I also feel that it makes it a little more presentable, like, oh, this is not something you can edit. This is my final product. Mm -hmm. Which is intriguing to me. As opposed to, it's, it's, a, it's so, um, it it's kind of makes it a read-only version. And there's a lot of chatter in the TiddlyWiki group forever, as long as I've looked at it. It's like, how come there's not a read-only version where you just take all the editing capabilities away? You don't want people to write. And it's actually really hard to do. It's really hard to make it so that it's read-only. You can't save it but it's really hard to close off all the editing capabilities. Yeah. Um, and then once you, yeah, and I agree with you, by the way, it's the right thing to do, but it's, yeah. And yeah. you can sort of make it read only. Like, like I said, I took out the navigation and if you remove the uh, control panel here and all of the, uh, everything aside from custom yep. sidebar navigation and save it, then basically it is set as you can only be edited by no one ever again. So it's set. Yeah. By the way, doing that, is a little tricky. You have to leave a back door. I use hidden buttons. Yeah. Because otherwise you can't edit it and you're totally screwed. Um, I mean, you can edit it. You just have to go into the, you'd have to do it a different way. But yeah, I hide, um, I, I hide, a, you can make a secret button that changes something so that you can then edit it. Um, you always have to be able to get the control panel and so you could make a s hidden control panel button where it doesn't have an icon. You just linger your mouse over it and click it and it would take you to the control panel. Yeah. Or you could make it the same color as your background. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Cause I know Steve wanted to see it there. Here's how my single typing menu. What I did for that was to say, um, Yep, I, I do the drop down menu and then field one. So I eliminate the need for the second one. And then just down here on the list filter, I say uh, all the type one sort by that tiddler. And then you close off that and then make another square bracket, which would make it a um, uh, like an and statement kind of. Yep. So show all those or an or. I mean, or statement. Right. So then you just say sort by type two for that. And then you say and sort with a plus sign and then sort by whatever stat you need. So Derek's basically writing inside yeah. of filters. He's writing a filter that has an and, and, or, and, or. And then there's a sequence. In filters, there's a whole, there's a whole lot of documentation about how to write really complicated filters yeah. with these ands and ors because the whole of TiddlyWiki is written on the basis of filters. So mm -hmm. all the, when you use all the stuff that you're doing is all basically listing different filters. And, you know, so, so there's a very complicated um, filter language. We only scratch the surface of filters. And then here you see like each Pokemon's Tiddler, there's no content. Everything's based off of templates. And then, uh, so it's funny that everybody uses that language. Sorry to keep interrupting. So yeah. there is content, of course. Yeah. Text is just the field, like any other field. It just happens to be called yeah. text. And there's a template called view template that defines how a tiddler is going to be displayed when you open it. You can edit view template and you could make text a really small little box. You could make any one of the fields those bigger boxes if you wanted to by editing dollar sign colon slash view slash view template or something. Yeah. The if, if you do that, I mean, you really, you know, you're then templates are just templates. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, so it's funny to say there's no content. Um, technically saying there's no value in the text field. 
So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, drop it down. You can go. I can't go to it at the moment. But, yeah, so I've, I've shut off templates and, like, when it was saved and that kind of stuff. Because mm-hmm. I felt, again, it made it look nicer. Yep. But, yeah, if you go to the, the – Oh, you've got tag shut sign. off. Yeah. Yeah. If you go to the dollar sign slash new template, it'll take – you. it will move around. It'll, list, you, it'll list all the templates, and yeah. one of the templates is called view or edit. There's a template for editing templates. So – and you can modify. And I've – thought that it would be helpful to have multiple text style fields. Yeah. I just haven't gotten around to implementing it yet. Uh, the other big thing I just wanted to show was my evolve into template because this was an interesting concept problem I ran into where some Pokemon will evolve into more than one Pokemon. So this is something I had to figure out. I can show that I did in a minute, but for here you can see that I am, filtering for all the Pokemon tagged Pokemon, then searching the, t- the from field for the title of the Pokemon, and then sorting. Oh, yeah, so, so zoom in on that, because we that was a question that we had before. Yeah. Oh, your zoom is funky, yeah, okay. Um, so that's using the search, highlight, oh, there it is, highlight that line again? Yep. So, Derek showing us how you use search colon from the field title. So now he's just searching one field and looking for certain values and then pushing, putting them into a list. Um, and then using that as like the evolve from. So that's a cool, and then he goes and collects the images, et cetera. So yeah, that's a, that's a nice feature. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. And then just real quick, just to show that mm-hmm. off, uh, Yours gets slow too, doesn't it? Oh, once you've opened up like more than 20, mm-hmm. it, since they're all shadow, you don't notice it. Uh, right, because he's using zoom in, so all those tiddlers are open, so the thing slows down. Yeah. yeah. yeah so if you can see Rotom evolves into five different possibilities based on what you do with it. So, I, to, so that obviously this is just listing them all off and then by name and then what, how they evolve. Very nice. Thank you. Any questions? So when you showed this, what was the response? Um, so yeah, uh, for the social case, we had two judges come in to view my project, and they were both very impressed with the way I've set up my data structure. I can show that off too. I can show that off. Um, yeah, the way I, I organized all my data and the possibilities of the project, like I explained like, oh, you know, this could be used for more than just Pokemon. It's whole data structures in itself. Do you think they got it? Yes, I believe they understood. Um, cool. Yeah, both had very thin grasps on what Pokemon were, mm-hmm. but explaining <laughs> them that like, you know, there's, this is my spreadsheet, by the way. All 840 rows and... 26 columns or so. Mm-hmm. I borrowed this from someone else. I didn't import it myself. Yeah. But they have, um, yeah, they were impressed by uh, the, my use of data structure and the way I've presented it in itself. That like, oh, you take all this information that means almost nothing by itself and present it in a matter that like everyone can understand really. Mm-hmm. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. I'm glad that you got to show that in, in public. Yeah. Um, are we done for the day?